man did we score some absolute bargains on this hardware. You have it here first, an absolute budget build on our channel. We haven't done budget builds really before. We have done one, it was about $1,000 budget build. This one, however, is going to be so cheap. We scored some absolute bargains. Where's that little piece of paper? All right, guys, this is insane. We did some shopping around. Ryzen 2200G. Now, this thing, right? Yes, it is a generation outdated. I get it. You can put it in the comments, but listen, 2200G. It is used. Sells brand new for $129. We picked this up because of the third generation launch for $20. 20 Australian dollars that is. Absolute bargain. So because we found this so cheap, we thought we'd try make a budget PC for the channel and also make it water-cooled and we would customize it as well. What else do we got in this stack of goodies? We've got the Antec Prism fans right here. Uh, these actually, we picked these up off of Facebook for $20. $25. These are normally 109 Australian dollars. $25 used. These come with LEDs and fans. They are ARGB fans and you can put them in the case and sync them up to motherboard software. Absolute bargain for these fans. What else do we have? The AeroCool Cylon case. It's an RGB case. We picked this bad boy up for $30. It is used but for $30, you can't really get much better than that. Now for the brand new stuff in this system, we could have picked some other stuff up, used, but we couldn't find any deals. So we actually did go with the VS450 Corsair power supply. Now this is a more reliable power supply and of course fits within our budget. So it's gonna be absolutely amazing to power this system. We did go with the Asus Prime A320MK motherboard. Now this of course will support our CPU really nicely. This was 85 Australian dollars, one of the cheaper motherboards that we could get still with some good features. So we're gonna slap this in the system. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. Our next new part was the Kingston A400 SSD. This is 120 gigabytes. Now, of course, you could swap this out for a hard drive. However, we did need an SSD for the office anyway, so we did go with the SSD. Now for this budget, I actually would recommend spending more on a hard drive. You'd get more storage that way, but we do have those fast speeds. For the SSD, this is 120 gigabytes of capacity. And of course, if you did get a hard drive, you would have more capacity for games and things like that. But uh, SSD speeds, it's gonna be absolutely insane for our system. And we did get this for only $30, which is a pretty good bargain. Lastly, we did get the T-Force Dark RAM. This is 3000 megahertz. So the CPU is really gonna benefit from those fast speeds. And it is eight gigabytes, as I said. Now, we actually do have some more T-Force RAM at those exact speeds and timings. So we could chuck that in there for 16 gigabytes if we did want to up that budget a bit, but we did get them for $50 new. Now these were on sale as well. I believe normally they're about 75, but $50, absolute steal. Now when you add all of the pricing up, that comes to about 200 US dollars, but we decided, I mean, you guys know we're water cooling enthusiasts, so we decided to actually grab the cheapest copper water cooling kit that we could find. We found that on AliExpress. This was 150 US dollars, almost as much as the actual PC, but well worth it for us because you guys know we are water cooling enthusiasts. Now you don't need the water cooling guys. You could just spend 200 US dollars and get all of this without the water cooling and use the CPU cooler that came with the CPU. However, you guys know we love our water cooling. So we are going to be doing a hard line water cooling loop and we are going to be modifying the case as well. So 200 US dollars for all of the parts plus the water cooling, which was 150 US dollars for a full CPU loop. That brings us to 350 US dollars for the whole PC. How about we make it a 400 US dollar budget, which gives us $50 to customize the computer. I'm pretty sure we could do it within that budget. Anyway, guys, if you like where this video is heading, stick around and enjoy.
we've finally come to a halt here. Uh, the Bisky water block kits that we actually bought um, seems to be Intel and not AMD. Now, I'm pretty sure we did select AMD on the site, but I cannot be 100% sure, so I don't know what to say to the seller to get a new one. Uh, so what we're actually going to do is we're going to actually try and use this water block and come up with our own retention plate so that the water block makes nice contact with the CPU. Uh, we don't have any metal laying around at the moment and we really need to get this video out and this project done. So what I'm actually going to do is use some formula acrylic. Now, what I'm hoping for, and I really hope this works, is that the acrylic... And it shouldn't because it's 4 mil and it's going to have this plate that's already on the CPU um, helping to brace it in place. When I put the acrylic down, what I'm hoping to do is have the acrylic go through the screws, then over the top of the existing bracket on the CPU block. Then what I'm going to do is put the springs on top of that to create that tension, and then I'm going to screw it up tighter and tighter, just finger tight. I don't want to over tighten it. Um, I don't want to, you know, make anything weaker within the build. So let's see if that actually works, and then we'll actually test out the CPU to see how much contact is actually being made and what the temperatures are like in some gaming benchmarks.
Searching for your dress 